بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. My brothers, my sisters, my children, those who are here now, those who may listen to this later. I am so happy to be in this beautiful masjid, the house of Allah. And in this beautiful town known as Kassar Kot. Here in this beautiful country, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant every one of us the ability to focus. Today, people are losing the path because they are no longer focused on where they need to go. The path is from this world to the hereafter. When you were born, you start becoming old. So much so that after one week, someone comes to your mother and they say, how old is he? They don't say, how young is he? They say, how old? Because you are becoming old. You are one week old. They don't say you are one week young, because you become old and old. Until you grow to an age where they say he is very old. So what happened? You started from birth. One, two, three, four, five, up to 70, 80, and sometimes you drop out in the middle. Where do you go? Somewhere. For us as believers, we call it the Akhirah, the hereafter. We call it the Akhirah, the hereafter. Now, when you came onto the earth, you had no clothes, you had no belongings. When you leave, you live with no clothes, no belongings, but out of respect, as soon as you are born, they cover you. And out of respect, as soon as you die, they cover you. Respect. No matter how much of this world you accumulate, you gather, it will only give you two square meters when you die. No matter how much money you have, how much you have done in this world, at the end of the path, it will only give you two square meters to do what? To pay. And you have to leave everything behind. Everything. What you did while you were on earth is known as Aman, your deeds. These deeds, they are what makes you or breaks you. If I give you a ticket to go to Mecca for Umar or for Hajj, or someone gives you a ticket, or you buy your own ticket to go to Mecca, for Hajj or Umrah. How long will you go there for? Your visa is only 14 days, one month maximum, maybe. Can you stay there forever? Can you bring the Kaaba back to Kerala or to Karnataka? Can you bring it back here? No. Can you bring back the whole of the Zamzam well here? No. Can you bring the Haram to your country? No. You have to leave. So if you purchase a ticket to go for Umrah and you wasted your time in Mecca, you have lost. If you purchased a ticket to go to a Masjid al Nabawi in Medina Munawwara and you wasted your time there, you have lost. Why? It was only 14 days. Whatever I found there, I left there. When I was there, I ate, I drank, I enjoyed. Maybe I took one or two small things because this is dunya. This is the world. 
But everything I left and I came back, either I am a changed person or I am not a changed person. If I am a changed person, my Hajj or Umrah is successful. <coughs> if I did not change, I wasted my time, my money, my effort, my energy, and I came back, I'm doing the same bad things again. No use, no benefit. The same applies on earth. Allah put you in the dunya. He told you, do deeds. How many deeds you want? Do as many deeds as you want. One day you will leave, not 14 day visa, maybe 14 year visa, maybe 60 years visa, maybe 70 years visa, maybe 20 years visa. Don't lose focus. Like when you go for Umrah, every time remember where you are, I'm in Makkah. I need to make use of my time, tawaf, salah, ibadah, tawbah, istighfar, drink as much thumbs up as you can so on, zikr, whatever else, right? Because I'm in Makkah, value is higher. I am going to leave one day. The same applies if you are on earth, you are born. Do salah, zakah, ibadah, whatever you can, hajj, whatever you can, do many things because when you leave, wallahi, no matter how much you have gathered on this earth, the earth will not give you anything besides to be this way, to be. And on top of that, they will put someone else after some time, in a lot of cases. Why am I saying this? In the house of Allah, we feel good. We are happy. We read salah. We are in the madrasa. We do hif. We are good people. The minute you go out, environment is different. There will be shaitan, there will be haram, there will be women, men who are not related to you. There will be gambling, casinos, nightclubs, drugs, movies. All the distractions are there. If you go towards the distraction, you lost. Focus. When you see a very successful businessman, he's focused. He knows what he wants. I want this. By next year, this time, I must have one million euros. He knows that. And he must think and plan. I need this much. Next year, this time, this is where I should be. I plan. The same way you need to plan for your religion. If you are not regular with salah, Tell yourself, I need to be a dealer with Salah. You are not reading Quran, I need to read Quran. You are doing haram, I need to cut this haram. The question is when? When? So Allah gives you the answer. Allah says, Inna ajal Because they run in the wrong direction. 
they want to go from Mumbai to Delhi, but they are facing Sri Lanka. Where are they going to go? They will get lost. They will drown because they don't even know that we want to go in a certain direction, but we are facing in the wrong direction. Who wants to jump? All of us. We want to Remember, give us jump. Face Jannah. We want Jannah, we are facing Jannah. Yes? Face Jannah. How do you face Jannah? Try your best. Your salah, your zakah, your purity. Be kind to your family. Watch your tongue. Especially the young people. And even the old people. Watch your tongue. Your tongue is evidence. Your tongue is evidence. What you do with your tongue shows whether you are a good person or a bad person. Akhlaq. Akhlaq is a mu'min. Together with taqwa Allah, we have to develop husnul khuluq. It's in the hadith. When Allah wants to give you jannah, He looks at your relationship with Him. You have a good relationship with Allah? Yes. How is your character? How is your relationship with other people? This boy, what's my relationship with him? Allah made him, Allah made me. How I talk to him, how he talks to me, how I relate, how I help, how I assist. Those who belong to another religion, what is your relationship with them? Allah made them, Allah made you. You cannot attack them, you cannot harm them. You need to help them, they are your brothers and sisters. You need to guide them, be good to them, say good words to them. If someone swears you, don't swear back. Because if you swear back, you are saying like that. The problem with us is in our families, with our wives, with our brothers and sisters, with our parents, with our <coughs> children. We are very rough. Very rough. One hand we are reading Salah five times, the other hand we are swearing also five times. One hand we are fulfilling Salah five times, the other hand we are abusing five times. One hand we are doing good deeds five times, another hand we are doing sin five times. What is it? If you put on the scale, there is not going to be goodness. You need more good deeds than bad deeds. You know that scale of the day of the young, your deeds and mind will be weighed. You need more good to do a lot of good. Be focused. That's what I want to say today. Be focused. You are doing hefas. Be focused. When you are doing hefas, the shaitan will come to you and tell you very difficult. Give it up. If you give it up, the train will carry on with other people on. You jumped on the wrong station. Right? The train is gone. Too late. You jumped on. No matter how cramped it is in the train, wait until you get to your station. Then you can jump. When you want to do salah, shaitan will come to you too cold, too hot, water is like this, this is like that, I'm tired, I'm not tired. Oh, that is the trick to make you to lose focus. Make you lose focus. When you lose focus, it's gone. When you lose focus, it is gone. Focus. So, the last thing I want to say is when we die, each one of us will be known what do you want to write in your book? When you die, you will get your book. What is in your book? Whatever you did on earth, it will be given to you in a book, like the report of the school. But the report of the school is very brief summary. The book on Priya.
on that day when the books are placed, you will find them. They will say, what? What's wrong with this book? Everything I did, we can spot it in the book. How? They will be ashamed. Nothing small or big is left out. It's in the book. Allah says, you will find it in front of you. Allah does not oppress you. So write your book. Correct. You are writing the book. Write it nicely. Put a good page every day. Do something good. What happened? I wrote it in my book. Nice thing. Every day help my people. Salah, Zakah, Hajj. Whatever it is, all the time. It must be in your book at least. Hajj is for about some, not on everyone. Zakah is for about some, not on everyone. But charity, you can smile. You can be kind. You can look after your parents. You can be kind to your children. You can speak nicely to your wife and your husband. Speak very nicely. Serve them, help them. It doesn't mean you are the husband, so that's it. Your wife is your slave. No, she's not the slave. She is your partner. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to help sometimes. When help was needed, he used to help. Do you need help? Do you think you are a big man now? I cannot help. The day you can go to help your family, to do the sum, sum of the house things, or maybe little bit cooking, something small. That is the day you are following the sun. But sometimes we are too high to do that. Stop for your God. May Allah soften us. It is a true sun. Help your family. They will, your relationship will change totally. They will say, what? This man is crazy. What's wrong with him today? They will just look at you and smile. They will be, inside their heart they will cry out of love. Because the attitude we have today is changed. We are not kind to our own family. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, hukum, hukum The best from you is the best to his wife. Wow. Imagine you are sitting friends and your friends say the best of you is the best to his wife. They say, hey, get out, get lost. It's not the law of it now. But it's a hadith. You are Muslim. You need to know it's a fact. You cannot say get lost because that will be very dangerous for your imam. work hard and Allah will help you to be focused. Write your book in a nice way. Nice way. Now, last question. If I wrote something which was very bad, because in some, maybe I made a mistake. I wrote something very bad in my book. Something sent maybe. What do I do? Don't worry, you are still alive. You can delete it. Change. Take the page, throw it out.
example, a book, the name is, uh, what can we say? Give me the name of a book. Any book. Motivational moments. Motivational moments. It means inside the book there is motivation and it is just a moment each. Right? So from the name you understand roughly what is inside the book. The same applies when you and I get our books. We will automatically know from the cover of the book and how we receive the book that you know what this book here it is good. That's why Allah says, you see, when you are getting a prize, when you did well, they call you to the stage, right? They call you to the stage and you go, you're happy. You see, show your mother and father that they call, you see, right? But when you are asked, when you fail, you don't even go that day to school because you know, it's okay, I haven't received my result afterwards. They didn't call you to the stage, right? You are looking down. The same thing, when you receive on the day of Qiyam your book with pride in the right hand, that is a different type of pride, it is happiness. You receive in the right hand, it is an award, you are happy, yeah, hey, see my book, you see. You receive in left hand, why did you tell me one, one side? Why? Because wrong, something wrong happened. So to get that good book, you must make sure that you have done some good deeds. May Allah make it easy for us. It's still far from Tawbah. May Allah open your doors. I was going to speak for 10 minutes, but I spoke for 20 minutes. Because the translator was going to translate for 20, 10 minutes also. Now he doesn't need to translate. If you understood what I said, put up your hand. Ah, we don't need translation. There are a few who might not have understood. You ask those who understood each other. They will explain.